Welcome to our weekly broadcast of the African Treasures. Here we bring to you African arts, culture and music. We also discuss issues of concern to people of the African descent in America, the Caribbean, South America, Africa and all over the world. We invite you to come and see Africa in a positive light. So stay tuned and tell your friends to do the same. Welcome to another episode of the African Treasures. I'm Dr. Michael Keke, your host. And I'm Mutenta Mazoka Clyde, your co-host. Our focus today is on infectious diseases as they affect people of African descent. And our guest is Joyce Dritton, MD. She's the medical director of the uh, Dritton Medical Associates. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to the show, Dr. Drayton. It's a pleasure to have you. And I guess we'll delve straight into the questions that pertain to malaria. Now, what exactly is malaria? Malaria is a serious and sometimes deadly disease that is vector-borne, okay. meaning that it is transmitted to humans by insects or animals. Now, what kind of insects in particular? Is there one particular type of insect that you know, carries the malaria virus? Mm -hmm. Yes, the mosquito transmits malaria, a particular mosquito called an anopheline mosquito, okay. and only the female of the species transmits malaria. Just has to be the woman, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, and where does malaria occur, as in what regions? Is it just in South America, Europe, or is it Africa? Malaria is very widespread. Okay. 92 countries are what we call malaria endemic countries, or wow. countries where malaria is fairly common. Okay. So that means that about 41% of the world's population is at risk for the disease. And this covers the areas of Central and South America, all of the continent of Africa, mm -hmm. uh, Western Asia in the Middle East, oh, the Indian subcontinent, and Southeast Asia. Because most of the time when you hear of malaria, you think African countries and you do not, especially Asia, I would have never thought oh, yes. it was um, there in Asia. And I suppose this is due to the fact that the mosquito breeds there? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, malaria was endemic to the United States um, oh. at the turn of the century, but efforts to eliminate the mosquito from uh, the north northern part of North America has uh, reduced malaria such that it's very uncommon uh, to see it in a person who hasn't traveled abroad. But would you see it here in the United States? Are there cases, reported cases of people oh, having absolutely. malaria here? Oh, absolutely. Wow, I had no clue. And um, generally speaking, what are the symptoms of malaria? How does one, you know, get the idea that they have malaria? Well, the first uh, thought that, it, that you may, be at, may have malaria should come if you know that you've traveled to an endemic country. Okay. Um, and either if you get sick there or if upon your return to the United States, if you develop a fever, that's the first sign of the disease. Okay. Fever, sweating, achiness, and the like. And what is the general period that one might feel ill? I mean, is it a couple of weeks, months, or...? Well, that can depend upon the, the particular strain of the disease, but initially the fever is very um, stable and it mm -hmm. stays fairly frequently just through the day and a couple of days. Over a period of days, it then becomes periodic, such that you may have a fever one day, but not have another fever for two days. And okay. it usually cycles that way, that you'll have it on the first and third day, and you'll get a break, and then it'll come back. Now, people say there's a relationship between sickle cell and malaria. What is the relationship between the two? Well, there's, a, there's no proof, but there is a theory that uh, people of African descent, uh, um, continental Africans developed uh, the gene for sickle cell, uh, for sickling of red blood cells in a response to the presence of malaria. Because okay. when your red cells that are normally round in shape form a sickle shape, the malaria I parasite see. cannot live. And so there is a theory that sickle cell genes um, and different, the various forms of sickle cell evolved because of exposure wow. to malaria. Okay. And um, are there any infectious diseases that disproportionately relate to people of color versus other people of the world? Well, um, of course, malaria because of the um, location of the vector, right. but TB, tuberculosis, is a disease that disproportionately affects people of color, particularly in the United States, uh, and of course HIV. 
uh, and, is another disease. And for um, the benefit of our audience, what exactly is TB? Tuberculosis is caused by a bacteria um, okay. called uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay. It generally affects the lung, but it can occur in other parts of the body. And it happens to be uh, one of the pneumonias that can be transmitted simply by being in the room with a person who coughs. Mm. Interesting. And so, so we, we do isolate people who we know have tuberculosis, uh, and we do have to treat for a long time to make sure that they don't have the disease and can't spread it. Now, is this also a regional thing in terms of well, having it only in Africa, or do you find um, tuberculosis here in the United States? Yes, tuberculosis is actually one of the most common infectious disease causes of death around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the rates in the United States are low and have been declining over the last decade. But again, um, I guess about under 50% of cases occur in people who were born in the United States. 51% of cases that we see in the United States are people who were foreign born. Hmm. Um, unfortunately, of the people who were born in the United States, about 46% are African Americans. Wow. So they make up, African Americans make up almost about, half right. the cases of endemic TB uh, and ap actually represent one in every four cases of TB. Uh, among all cases in the United, in the United States. States. Well, if I may loop back to malaria mm -hmm. and just ask about the treatment for malaria, and um, if you could also include in that answer what your advice is for people who are traveling abroad to these countries that you know generally have malaria as a disease that's common there. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, there is treatment for malaria. There are four different types of malaria. Uh, one type we call falciparum type okay. uh, is a little bit more serious and requires more aggressive treatment uh, for people, but it is treatable. However, the best way um, to deal with the disease is, of course, to avoid getting it. Okay. And our advice to travelers is that you see your physician at, uh, at least four to six weeks prior to traveling abroad. Okay. Because not only are there ways to prevent malaria, but there are other vaccinations that may be required in order for you to, to enter travel. other countries. Right. Once you are in a country uh, or have traveled to a country where malaria is endemic, we advise you to wear long sleeves, long pants, mm -hmm. um, try to to wear lighter clothing. Mosquitoes tend to be attracted to darker clothing. Okay. And use a DEET containing insect repellent. Uh, spray both your clothes and um, you know your sleep areas and, and use the mosquito nets. Well that is yeah. wonderful to hear and you know it, it definitely informs our viewers. And if you all please stay tuned as we come back for another um, episode of African Treasures. We are bringing the treasures of Africa from all parts of the world straight to you. The Law Office of Donald P. Edwards is proud to sponsor African Treasures, a program that celebrates the African continent, its people, its music, its past and its future. Wherever we are on the face of the earth, we are an African people. Ethiopian Airlines, Africa's link to the world, proudly offers convenient flights out of Washington Dulles International and Newark Liberty International Airports on Mondays and Saturdays to Addis Ababa and with return flights on Sundays and Fridays. On board our new Boeing 767-300 aircraft, you can experience a journey as exciting as the destination. Our in-flight service has earned an excellent reputation for its quality and comfort. Let those close to Africa's heart help you discover its beauty. Enjoy our traditional hospitality and superb in-flight service backed by over 50 years of experience. At Ethiopian Airlines, safety, reliability, and service are our top priorities. For more information, you can contact Ethiopian Airlines at 1-800-445-2733 or visit our website at www.ethiopianairlines.com. Ethiopian Airlines, going to great lengths to please. Welcome to the second segment of this interesting topic. Our focus today is on uh, infectious diseases as they affect people of African descent. And our guest is Joyce Drayton, MD. Welcome back again. Thanks. What vaccines are available to uh, adults? Yeah, vaccines, when we think about vaccination, we very often think of childhood vaccinations. Mm -hmm. But there are vaccines that are recommended for adults. Uh, two of those are the influenza vaccine and the pneumococcal vaccine to prevent pneumococcal pneumonia. Now, you mentioned the word influenza. Please, can you explain what it means? 
Well, influenza is a disease. It's caused by a virus, uh, the influenza virus, uh, causing symptoms like fever, cough, um, achiness, tiredness, and sometimes stomach upset. Uh, and influenza can occur in epidemics uh, throughout a country or pandemics, meaning that the disease trans is transmitted across the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, is influenza uh, prevalent in African countries, like you mentioned? The, um... Right. Well, it's, n it's no more prevalent by region, but when we look at the percentage of individuals who receive vaccines against influenza, it's very low among people of African descent in the United States. Okay. Uh, as low as 40% of those for whom the vaccine is recommended actually okay. receive it. Wow. So within that group, they're at greater risk for uh, getting the disease and complications from the disease. Uh, who should receive influenza vaccine and pneumonia vaccine? Well, the influenza vaccine is recommended for uh, any adult age 50 and over. Uh, used to be recommended for individuals 65 and over, but they lowered that to 50 and over. People who are who have chronic uh, medical illnesses, such as kidney disease, patients mm -hmm. on dialysis, people who have liver disease or cirrhosis, um, individuals who have chronic lung disease, like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, should receive the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And also people who have immune uh, dysfunction, patients with HIV, mm -hmm. who have leukemia or lymphoma, or patients who receive uh, steroids, which can Im Im suppress the immune system. Mm -hmm. And how often are these uh, vaccines administered? Influenza changes every year. So, so yeah. every year we have to survey what wow. particular strain is out and they mm -hmm. create the vaccine for the coming fall. Uh, it's usually administered between October uh, and February, March. Um, and so that changes every year uh, and should be taken every year by those who need it. With respect to pneumococcal or pneumonia vaccine, um, generally it's given once, um, but for people who receive their first dose at age 65 or who have a chronic illness, they need to get it again every five years. Okay. Well, who shouldn't receive the... Uh uh, flu vaccine, because we're talking um, about who should, no, no, who shouldn't. Sure. Um, the vaccine is actually cultivated within eggs, and so anyone who has an allergy to eggs should not receive the vaccine, hmm. and your ah. physician will probably ask you about yep. that. Um, wow. And of course, anybody who um, has a very severe immune suppression needs to talk to their physician about whether it's the right time for them to receive it. Hmm. What are the risks uh, associated with uh, these flu vaccines? Well, flu and, and pneumonia vaccines are very, very safe. Um, the influenza vaccine got a very bad reputation in the late 70s with the swine flu vaccine that people uh, got a little sick behind. But for the most part, people will have um, a little redness or pain at the site, perhaps. Um, they may have some fever, but it usually goes away within a day or so and can be treated with Tylenol. Uh, if you did have shortness of breath or severe rash, you should immediately call your doctor. And what would you say to somebody who, who would uh, tell you that, hey, doc, I uh, took the vaccine and got sick anyway? Uh, yes, that's a misconception about the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. Flu vaccine uh, prevents influenza due to one particular virus, but there are many, many viruses that cause the common cold. So if you got sick and you took the flu vaccine, you probably had a cold due to some other virus. Um, it's just that influenza can lead to other complications like bacterial pneumonia, uh, and so we recommend vaccination against that particular virus. You know, when I was growing up uh, um, as a child, a lot of babies died uh, due to influenza. I remember, you know, being a kid at a time, I thought, oh, we have influenza, that's influenza, and these kids are dying and stuff like that. And I think that has decreased a little bit nowadays, maybe due to the uh, uh, improved medical care. Yes, like I that. think so I think that's the case. The vaccine it took a lot of lives. Yeah, when I was growing up, yeah. it isn't given to very young children because mm -hmm. they have immature immune systems and are mm -hmm. unlikely to be able to develop immunity anyway. I so see. we don't give it to very very young um, neonates or infants. Um, but of course, children who have asthma, mm -hmm. you know, who are mm -hmm. you know five six 
you know, 10 years old should take the vaccine. Well, thank you. We're going to pause for a station break and uh, we'll come back. Stay tuned, please. Africa than wild animals and big trees. Tune in weekly to the African Treasures program and learn more about the modern day Africa and the African people. One cannot fall in love with that which they don't know. So remember to tune into African Treasures weekly and keep in mind to love Africa is to know Africa. Welcome to our final segment of this episode of African Treasures where we're dealing with infectious diseases. We have Dr. Drayton with us today and um, also don't forget to visit our website at www.africantreasuretv.com. Dr. Drayton, what other diseases are there that generally affect people of color 
I have one that comes to mind, I suppose, would be diabetes. Mm -hmm. And if you could please enlighten us on what else bothers us. <laughs> Some of the non-infectious diseases that disproportionately affect uh, communities of color mm -hmm. uh, include hypertension, uh, cardiovascular disease, um, and diabetes. Okay. And the complication of that, which is renal failure. And what, what for a lot of people hear the word diabetes, there are constantly adverts on TV where you see, you know, blood testing and what have you. What is diabetes? Well, diabetes uh, mellitus is an um, inability to handle uh, the blood sugar, to metabolize blood sugar. Okay. Uh, and there are two types. One type, which we call type 1, uh, tends to have onset in childhood. And that's when the pancreas, which produces insulin that mm -hmm. controls the sh blood sugar level, doesn't produce any insulin. At all? No, right. Okay. And the second type is type 2, um, usually uh, having onset during adulthood, in which the pancreas produces insulin, but the body is resistant to the effects of insulin. And so the, the sugar can't leave the bloodstream and go into the muscles. It stays in the bloodstream and the sugar levels are high. How can one test to find out if they have diabetes or not? Well, your physician can order a fasting blood sugar level. Okay. Uh, and there are certain levels at which it's diagnostic of diabetes. Some people will have a, to have a glucose tolerance test in which you drink a certain amount of uh, kind of sugar water mm -hmm. and they measure your uh, blood sugar levels over a period of hours. Of time. And um, you also mentioned hypertension. I know that's a big problem within our communities because, you know, I mean, some of it is due to stress in the world. But other than that, what might lead to hypertension? Um, a lot of it is genetic. Okay. Uh, much of it does have to do with stress and aging. Uh, as we get older, um, just as your muscles aren't quite as strong as they are, mm -hmm. your uh, arteries aren't quite as flexible uh, and elastic as normal. So you do develop hypertension. Wow. Well, I guess I'll turn it over to you, Mike. Well, Dr. Dritton, you've uh, illuminated a lot of things on the show. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can talk about infectious diseases and... Um, epidemics without talking about AIDS mm -hmm. and HIV. Yes. Oh, the other way around, HIV and AIDS. So could you touch on it a little bit? Um, how do they relate to people of African descent? Mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately, HIV is another uh, infectious disease that disproportionately affects people of color throughout the world, with mm -hmm. the bulk of the cases and deaths occurring among people on the African continent. Mm -hmm. And in this country, with a disproportionate uh, number of cases occurring among uh, blacks and Hispanics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've noticed, we have noticed that uh, since the mid-1990s, when all of the highly active medications against HIV came out, a decrease in the progression of disease uh, to AIDS and a decrease in the death rate. Um, and that has occurred in all groups, the majority and among community, in, people in communities of color. However, the decline uh, in the death rate has not been quite as steep. And so that reflects, to some degree, uh, access to health care, um, health care resources, um, right. and the, just the access of health care for people in those communities. Uh, you, you are the medical director of the Drayton Medical Associates, right? Yes. And have two offices mm -hmm. in metropolitan Atlanta. Yes. One in... Uh, one in, in uh, DeKalb County? Right, 465 Winway, Suite 201, near DeKalb Medical Center. And our other office is at 1136 Cleveland Avenue, Suite 611, in the Medical Arts Building on the campus of South Fulton Medical Center. And in your practice, you devote more of your attention to treating people with uh, infectious diseases? Yes, we practice internal medicine, uh, primary care, but also immune system health. So we do um, uh, treat patients who have hypertension, diabetes, Mm -hmm. um, we do screening, health screening, pap smears, and the like. But we do have a, uh, patients who have some immune uh, challenges, including HIV. HIV. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Well, um, how often, uh, when are your office hours? Mm -hmm. We're open in Decatur um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday from 9 to 12, Thursday afternoons from 1 to 5, and we have a Wednesday evening session for people who work mm -hmm. uh, from 5 to 8. We also do um, have Saturday appointments um, 
you know, that can be scheduled. Mm -hmm. And on Cleveland Avenue, we're there Monday afternoons from 1 to 5, but we can see patients um, on other days by appointment. Well, mm -hmm. uh, we have your telephone number on the screen. Okay. So um, I want to thank you for coming to African Treasures and sharing your knowledge with us and educating us a little bit. Thank you. Um, please come back. I shall. Please do, yes. We'll look forward <laughs> to it. And with this, we'll bring this uh, interesting topic to conclusion. Join us again next week, same time. Thank you. Welcome to Trusty Drugs and Home Healthcare, where we provide you with a wide variety of products and services. Visit us for all your prescriptions, compounding, over-the-counter drugs, children's services, and much more, as well as state-of-the-art, durable medical equipment. Our dedicated staff and registered pharmacists are waiting to give you a friendly and professional service. We are located at 435 Forest Parkway in Forest Park, Georgia. You may call us at 404-366-9088. Trusty Drugs and Home Health Care is the name to remember. We all know that dialysis can be an uncomfortable and tedious process. We at Trinity Dialysis Clinic understand this and strive to make your visit as positive and comfortable as possible. Our experienced staff and state-of-the-art medical equipment will ensure that you will get the best quality treatment available. Trinity Dialysis Clinic is conveniently located at 1354 Cleveland Avenue in East Point, just five minutes from the airport. Come and enjoy a relaxed and uplifting environment with us and make Trinity Dialysis Clinic your home away from home. For over 10 years now, the Metro Ebony Pages has been the only directory that caters to the minority communities in Metro Atlanta. For businesses trying to reach the minority communities, the Metro Ebony Pages is your vehicle. Individuals and families looking for services within the community, look first in the Ebony Pages. You may reach us at 404-209-8654. Manali